nak? Awak yang tu lah. Jangan lupa subscribe channel kita. Tanda sokongan. Terima kasih. Hai, Assalamualaikum. Jom kita revise sambil berehat. Sambil berehat pun kita boleh belajar tahu dengan tengah handphone. Apa tunggu lagi? Jom kita mula. Cuba teka. Apa tajuk yang kita akan bincangkan? Bila nampak traffic light warna hijau je, kita akan mula untuk memecut. Jadi kali ini kita akan tengok berkenaan dengan pecutan. What is acceleration? Okey, ingat lagi ke apa itu pecutan? Acceleration. Acceleration is a rate of change in velocity. Bila kita cerita pasal rate of change in velocity, means that acceleration is equal to change in velocity over change in time. Perubahan velocity mesti bahagikan dengan berapa masa yang diambil untuk perubahan itu berlaku. Alright, rate of change in velocity is acceleration. Okay, cuba tengok pada change in velocity. There are three condition where there is a change in velocity. The first one, magnitude of velocity changes bila objek bergerak dan magnitude of velocity, nilai velocity dia berubah. Atau magnitude of velocity tidak berubah tapi direction of velocity changes. Objek itu bergerak dengan magnitude of velocity yang sama tetapi berubah arah. Direction is changing. Dan yang ketiga, when both magnitude and direction are changes, bila kedua-dua magnitude atau direction, kedua-duanya pun berubah, so there is a change in velocity. Ingat ya, ada tiga perkara yang menyebabkan perubahan halaju. Alright, so let's look at acceleration. This time, kita akan tengok apa itu instantaneous acceleration dan juga average acceleration. Terakhir sekali, kita akan tengok apa itu uniform acceleration. Kita mulakan dengan instantaneous acceleration dahulu. Where instantaneous acceleration is instantaneous rate of change of velocity ataupun kita kata acceleration at a particular instant of time. Dan berdasarkan equation ini, we will get acceleration equation when we try to differentiate equation of velocity. Ataupun kita melakukan perbezaan pada equation of displacement sebanyak dua kali. Okey, kalau kita ada equation displacement, kita perlu differentiate dua kali. Di mana jika awak differentiate equation of displacement sekali sahaja, awak akan dapat equation velocity. Dan bila you differentiate equation velocity lagi sekali, you akan dapat equation of acceleration. Okay, jadi A is equal to dv over dt and A also equal to d squared s over dt squared. Cuba kita tengok contoh ini. Di sini kita ada satu contoh, kita ada Encik Tan yang telah lambat untuk pergi ke kerja and at point A, the initial velocity of Encik Tan adalah 0 meter per second kemudian Encik Tan berjalan pergi ke point B where the velocity of Encik Tan at point B is 2 meter per second dan Encik Tan jalan lagi dekat point C di mana bila Encik Tan tiba dekat point C, the velocity is equal to 10 meter per second. And look at the diagram. The time taken to travel from point A to point B is 50 seconds, but the time taken to travel from point B to point C is 80 seconds. So now, let's calculate what is the instantaneous acceleration at point B. Therefore, we can use this equation where VB minus UA over TB minus TA and we need to substitute all the values of VB, UA, TB and TA. Since he start at 0 second and Encik Tan reach at point B after 50 seconds, 
So the instantaneous acceleration at point B, exactly at point B, is equal to 0.04 meter per second squared. And how about instantaneous acceleration at point C? We still use the same equation, menggunakan equation yang sama, acceleration equal to the change of velocity over the time taken for the change. So 10 minus 2 over 130 seconds, where 130 seconds is the time taken to reach point C. Okay, so 50 seconds plus 80 seconds and it's equal to 130 seconds. And minus 50 seconds, where 50 seconds is TB, time at point B. Therefore, the instantaneous acceleration at point C, you can see here, it's equal to 0 0.1 meter per second squared. Nampak beza tak? Acceleration dekat point B, 0 0.04 meter per second squared. Dan instantaneous acceleration at point C is equal to 0 0.10 meter per second squared. Jadi, jom kita fikir sama-sama. What is the average acceleration of his motion? Kalau tadi kita kira instantaneous acceleration, kali ni kita nak tahu berapakah average acceleration of Encik Tan. So, remember this equation. Average acceleration is equal to the change of velocity from point A to point C bahagikan dengan the time interval from point A to point C. Jadi, kita substitutkan nilai V2 is the velocity at final position minus V1 the velocity at initial position and T2 is the time at final position and T1 is the time at initial position. Encik Tan mula daripada point A dan berakhir di point C. So, berapa average acceleration untuk Encik Tan? Jom kita kira. Okay, bila kita dah substitute all the values, therefore, the average acceleration of his motion is equal to 0 0.08 meter per second squared. Jadi, boleh bezakan tak average acceleration dengan instantaneous acceleration? Hmm, boleh? Okay, very good. Okay, seterusnya kita akan tengok what is uniform acceleration. So, a body has a uniform acceleration if it travels in a straight line and its velocity increases by equal amounts in equal interval of time. Ingat ya, objek itu bergerak dalam straight line dan velocity increase dengan kadar yang sama dalam masa yang sama. And remember, when the object is in uniform acceleration, maknanya dv dt of the object is constant. At any point of the motion of the object, dv over dt ataupun the rate change of the velocity object itu adalah sama dekat mana-mana point pada pergerakannya. Okay? So, contoh seperti ini, this motorcycle start at point A and then it will move to point B and then it will continue to point C and then it will continue to point D. Okay? And lastly, it will finish at point E. At point A, the initial velocity is 0 meter per second and it reach point B after 5 seconds where the velocity at point B adalah 10 meter per second. Kemudian, motosikal ni bergerak lagi ke point C selama 5 seconds dan the velocity at point C is equal to 20 meter per second. Dan dia bergerak lagi pada kadar yang sama. After 5 seconds at point D, the velocity is increased until 30 meter per second. Dan akhirnya, from point D to point E, motor itu bergerak lagi 5 second and reach point E with velocity at point E is equal to 40 meter per second. Jadi, boleh nampak tak pattern peningkatan velocity bagi motosikal ini? Daripada point A ke point E, the motorcycle increase its velocity by equal amounts in equal intervals of time. Boleh? So, jom kita kira 
acceleration of this motorcycle at any point of its motion. Jadi sekarang kita akan mulakan dengan pengiraan acceleration from point A to point B. Therefore, the acceleration is equal to 2 meter per second squared. And from point B to point C, the acceleration is also equal to 2 meter per second squared. Hmm. And from point C to point D, the acceleration is also 2 meter per second squared. And the last one, from point D to point E, the acceleration is also equal to 2 meter per second squared. Jadi, daripada nilai yang kita kira ini, we can conclude that the acceleration of the motion for this motorcycle is constant. Kita dah kira acceleration dari A ke B sama, B ke C sama, C ke D pun sama dan D pun E pun sama. Therefore, the acceleration is constant atau kita panggil sebagai uniform acceleration. So, bila kita construct a graph of speed against time, kita akan dapat satu graf garis lurus seperti dalam gambar rajah yang ditunjukkan. Okay, so the time taken for the motion is up to 20 second. Motor itu bergerak daripada point A to point E selama 20 seconds dan berhenti at point E where the speed of the motorcycle at point E reach 40 meter per second. And when we try to calculate the gradient of the graph untuk graph speed against time, kita akan nampak the gradient of this straight line graph is constant. Gradient dekat mana-mana point on the graph adalah sama, constant. Since the gradient of graph velocity against time akan berikan nilai acceleration, therefore the acceleration of this motion is constant ataupun kita panggil sebagai uniform acceleration. Jadi macam mana? Boleh bezakan tak? Apa itu instantaneous acceleration, uniform acceleration and average acceleration? Dan jangan lupa untuk tengok video ini jika anak-anak pelajar nak lihat lagi banyak example berkenaan dengan graph of motion. Okey, semoga kita jumpa lagi. Assalamualaikum dan selamat sejahtera.